All right, guys, what's up? So we're officially recording on the Q&A. So obviously I usually record the Q&As. Yeah, this is kind of question time. So if you guys have any questions or you kind of want to talk about certain things, the first thing before we get into questions, I really, really want to flush out one major idea that I teased earlier. So um, now that we probably have the most viewers and people can understand this, we have a watch list every single day. Alex talks about this, is literally the title of this video, man, like how to go through Alex's watch list, right? So Every single day, Alex puts together a very detailed and regimented watch list that is going to take you guys um, just and take you by the hand on exactly what you should be focusing on every single day. Like if it's not on, if there are a bunch of runners that you are looking at that are not on Alex's watch list, guess what, man? It's not even worth our time. So it's probably something that isn't worth your time because we're not focusing on it. And I'm talking specifically for small caps right now because this is what this watch list is kind of predetermined to focus on, right? So let's go to the After Hours channel real quick for any of you who missed. Um, and we're gonna go, we're gonna scroll up. Yo, who's having a nice ass lunch? Nice. All right. Uh, right here, guys. So check this out. Girls to Trade, Girls Trade 2, Junior Mod. Here are the final results from my statistics of the MIC watch list. This month, the data comes back from Alex, Tom Diesel, Joe Kelly, and Selena, uh, who put together watch lists in the mornings. I want to give a shout out to Selena for the excellent work she did on her list. Her stats are great. Girl power. I love it. The handwritten details are based solely on the, on the work she did and the work data. Keep in mind that the, that the never hit line stats are not negative reflection of the list. It's just that they never hit. So we're going based on criteria of what hit and what worked. Does that make sense? So uh, I'm going to get into this. Keep in mind, uh, the, 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 the market does not always give us what we want. So that's kind of what she's talking about right there. I have also provided an overview video of the specific steps taken in, the, in my analysis and included all of the charts and watch lists for each review. How sick is that? And she's always open to you know, criticism. I love that. So big, big, big thank you to our new junior mod. So check this out, guys. Based on her research, and she's really good at this, Alex's watch list, every, this is Alex's specifically, is a 90, dude, 92%, 91.5% win rate. Like it worked. It's not even win rate. It just worked. So if something is on the watch list, right, it actually worked. So if the lines didn't hit, obviously we're not, you know, that's not what's in play here. The, it's, it's what were the lines and when the lines did hit, did the trade actually work? And it did. So that's crazy, man. 91.5%. And then Joe is a hundred percent. If the lines hit, they work. And this is why you guys need to be reading the watch list every single morning. So, so let's go back to the advice that I gave back in the beginning of this webinar for new traders. If I could go back myself. So I'm talking to you as if I would teach, you know, my former self or if my future son came up to me and was like, hey dad, how do I trade? I'd be like, oh shit, all right, well kid, let's talk about it. Here's how you start. Don't try to make real money yet. Put the training wheels on guys. You should not be thinking for yourselves in the first month or two months. You should get a sim account, a simulator account. This is not trading real money. And you should follow the watch list to a fucking T. Am I saying copy our trades on a sim when you don't know shit? Yes, I am. I'm saying copy it like you copied homework in high school off a of Spanish final, baby. Because dude, I used to copy my balls off, man. And let me tell you something you will inadvertently and directly learn over time, but you're not risking real money to do so. The reason why is because it's form. And I gave this exact now analogy at the beginning of the webinar. If I'm learning tennis, which I'm an awesome tennis player, but there's guys who've never played tennis before. I, you know what I did when I first started learning tennis, man, in high school, I was undefeated, dude. I was a fucking rock star. I said to a trading or to, to a tennis coach that I hired every single week, um, when, when baseball season was over, when golf season was over, dude, I was playing tennis. And here's what I said. I, I, I like sports where you hit, you hit the ball, man. I, I get the aggression out. I said, listen, I like Roger Federer. I said, teach me everything about his exact style. And I immediately from, you know, childhood always had a two handed backhand, which didn't do shit. And she goes, okay, well, the first thing we're going to do, since you're actually like, this is your first lesson, we're getting started on this. And you're not just, you know, playing around with uncle Dito, you know, you're not just playing around with your aunt and uncle. Like you're actually trying to take this seriously. Here's a one-hander and here's how to do it. This is the same thing, guys. Don't start off trying to figure it out yourself. 
do a simulator with fake money and copy this to a T and don't focus on another ticker the entire day for a month. I'm telling you, man, I'm telling you, you're going to see the form of that backhand, of that forehand, of what a slice, a serve, what you should be doing. And then once you, <laughs> if the lives don't hit, you must uh, quit. Yeah, seriously. Um, the point is, guys, in a month, you might not even need the watches. You're going to learn how to trade for yourself because doing the watch list every day is going to put your focus in a linear fashion. It's going to say, oh, okay, okay. I didn't know what I was following the first two weeks. Now the third week, okay, I'm starting to see how Alex creates these watch lists. Okay, I'm starting to feel comfortable with outer lines or death candles or this and this. Okay, I'm starting to understand trend. You're just going to start understanding it. And once you're confident, then you start risking real money. But for the guys out there that come to me and they're like, Tosh, I'm down 10 grand. I don't know shit. I longed when I thought I followed a guy who shorted. I'm, I'm like, what? And he doesn't know hard stops and he's risking a third of his account. And he doesn't even know why he's down. And he's asking me like, Hey Tosh, what do I do? I'm like, Holy shit, dude, this is where I want to pull my hair out. This is where I want to freaking knock my own head against a brick wall. That's not okay, dude. That's not okay. You're giving up all your hard earned money for nothing. Don't go out and try to play tennis yourself. Get a goddamn coach, dude, golf, baseball, anything. I don't care what it is. Um, but you are going to need to learn how to do proper form. And the watch list is that tennis stroke, that golf swing, that, that basketball free throw, you know, the, 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 the three pointer, whatever, dude, any example that you can possibly, the breath stroke, whatever example possible, read the watch list, inundate yourself with the watch list. The watch list has a 92% win rate or a, well, what, what could be better be said about that is a win winning plan. So when the plan is laid out, the lines work, the plan worked. That's a rant. My, my, I'm, that, that's the rant over for the watch list. Did that make sense, guys? I'm trying to, every single week, I'm just trying to figure out how I can be a better educator to you guys. And look, we do not preach copying us and we never will. But I'm telling you, when you're on a sim, you should be copying because you're not risking real money and you're going to learn properly. But if you're at risking real money, it, we're not a pump room. We don't do alerts. It's not about copying us blindly. We want you guys to learn for yourself so that instead of obviously giving you a fish for the day, dude, in a month of a SIM account copying, you're going to learn how to use the fishing pole to catch all your own fish. And you know what? You should get to the point where you never need the watch list. That's when you know you're a really good trader is when you wake up and you go, hey, you know, I could give Alex's watch list a read. I don't need it. Because I know, dude, I know, I know what outer line, I know where I should be drawing my lines. I know where I want to hit this bitch. Like that's the point. But obviously this is always going to be here for you as a resource, as a backup, but you should get to the point where you've inundated yourself so much with process about learning how Alex even created this list that you don't even need it or don't even need to read it going into the day. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? I hope so. Uh, simple tip, use the MIC archive. So if I get in my time, yeah, absolutely, dude. That's, that's one of the best ways too, Woody. Use the archive. Guys, for those who don't know, annual lifetimes get access to our MIC archive, a full backup of chat, all these channels. You can go back years and see Alex's watch list and go through, man. Go through, back test, see how he did it. Uh, Edge Stock Trader, I think people also come into trading with unrealistic expectations and not giving it enough effort. You know why? I'll, I'll tell you why, man. Yes, you cannot become a doctor or lawyer uh, overnight. I will tell you why this is the case, Edge Stock. The reason why people come in with their hair on fire trying to make $10,000 a day and they've never even traded, you know why? Is because when you go on social media, it makes me want to fucking vomit. If you go on social media, between real estate, between Forex, between stock trading, between everything, you have guys in your face selling the dream, making it sound easy, not telling you the truth, making it sound like tomorrow you can be a millionaire. And let me tell you, it is overwhelming, it is exhausting, and is the fundamental reason for depression in our society because everybody else appears like it's so fucking easy. And let me tell you something, because I know a rudimentary I know a lot about crypto. I know a shit ton about stocks. I know a rudimentary about uh, real estate. And let me tell you something. Real estate is so much harder 
then these gurus appear to say, hey, you got 50K, don't pay down your student loans, just go get three rental properties. Oh yeah, dipshit, it's not that simple. There's contracts, there's legal, there's this and that. Can you even get approved from a bank? There is so much to know that all of this inundated like social media and, and world where everybody makes it, 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 you know what it is? I know what I'm trying to say. There's so much FOMO blasted at you from every direction. This is why people come in to the stock market and race to do it. They race. And a dude, a guy called me yesterday and said, I'm down 10K because I followed a tweet. And he didn't even know that the tweet was a short, he longed it. He thought it was a long. This is people rushing. This is people giving up their hard-earned money for nothing. This is the get rich quick. This is buy the lottery ticket. This is, hey, I need to have a million dollar penthouse tomorrow with Kate Hudson in the bathtub. Hey, dipshit, that doesn't come overnight. You gotta earn that. <laughs> you gotta earn Kate Hudson, bro. You gotta go, <laughs> you gotta earn that stuff, man. Definitely a lot. It's just everybody is cramming down FOMO of every industry down your throat. And then of course, whatever you're remotely interested in, you're just going to bum rush. And that's the problem right now. So does anybody have any questions? Let's kick this off to the kind of more the question side. My, I think my rant is pretty much over. Um, but let's talk about some things. What do you guys have questions on today, man? Let me pull up YouTube as well. Maybe I can, hopefully I can hound both. Oops, one sec. Ah. All right, there we go. Sorry, guys. I, if there's a lot of questions, I'll try to get to as many as I can. I'm a freaking, I'm a nut. I'm a goofball. Yes, correct. Uh, do, 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 let's see. You just see brothers. What's your strategy to make good returns? Cold as swags. Join, brother. Join. We will teach you all of our strategies, man. I'm telling you, we teach it all, brother. I promise you. Um, do, 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 the basic charging crypto. Uh, someone says the basic strategy does work for crypto. Holy shit. Big N24, dude, that's awesome. <laughs> that's so cool, man. Like our strategies, the, the reason why our strategies work, guys, is I'm not saying that they just blatantly work for crypto because I'm not a crypto day trader. Um, the reason why I've heard a lot of people say the same thing is because we trade price action, which is actually just psychology. You know, when you see something like GBS, we can tell you that this is a short that we're focusing on. Why? Because the psychology is, is it's broken. It's got lower highs. Um, and this is not necessarily a good long, like you, you can, you, there, it's the emotion in it. We're trading human psychology. We're not just trading for the sake of trading. That's, that's why I think it works is all of our principles are very much designed on trend in the feelings of the chart. Um, uh, cold swags. What's up? Uh, uh join MIC, man. Join what? Join myinvestingclub.com. That's what I'm talking about. That's what we're giving a webinar on, myinvestingclub.com. Come check us out. If you have any questions, book us a call, man. Yeah, book a call, brother. Yep, 10K RIP out, could have bought it. Yeah, well, that's what I told him, man. I said, bro, you literally copied a tweet wrong because you misread it and you just lost 10K. I said, you just missed out on a lifetime of education because you wanted to get rich quick. And I'm not saying, hey, yeah, yeah, come just buy our lifetime member. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, look at what your very rash decision cost you. Does that make sense? Yeah. You guys have any questions? Any questions say about process, about, you know, price action, about what we do, about, you know, joining the club? Like, definitely here to answer your questions, guys. Definitely got about 20 minutes, too. Anthony, what's up, man? Hey, Tosh, I'm new to trading and still finding my bias. Do you think it's best to long or short? This is a great question, man. Or does it make sense to try patterns that are really similar to the first bounce and first resistance and then decide based on your bias once you have some experience? Anthony, I love this question, brother, and I'll tell you why. Number one, I have two ways to answer this. Number one, um, do I think traders should start long or short? While I recommend personally, like, like, again, it's always, what would I go and do back, you know, eight years ago, if I could start again, I would get a SIM account and try everything because you're not going to know it. The, the quicker you can flush out, um, you know, what you like, it's just going to be the better. Right. So let me, let me show you what I mean. Um, hold on one sec, buddy. You should try all of these. You should try all of these, um, within the first couple weeks and, you know, dedicate a couple days. Like what I would do is, you know, maybe dedicate a week each, right? So say, look, I'm not going to trade real money. I'm going to do it on a simulator. Like the first week, I'm just going to try the first bounce and I'm going to see if it feels right. 
Um, and then, oh, okay, maybe it didn't. Maybe I'm a short seller. Let me try the first resistance. Oh, okay, you know what? That didn't feel right too. Oh man, but low hanging fruit did. So you, you give yourself kind of like a trial period to see where your emotions fit and what you're more comfortable, what your brain can identify with. Man, they're so different. But again, there's two ways to answer this question. On a general explanation of price action, I always recommend long first. Because when you know how gravity works with stocks, right? So like something like ABVC, you know that, you know, things can really, really rush up before coming back down or squeeze or how far they can go with multi-day runners. You know, obviously we've had a couple recently. I think that it's very, very important to learn the long side first personally. Um, and, you know, I, I definitely know that Val and Alex agree on that. Um, because once you know when the time of like inertia and momentum is subsides and it's time to come back down, you're going to know all the identifiers. You're going to know like the percentages. You're just going to know like the stuff moves, the death candles, the death line short. You're going to know like quote unquote meat on the bone. This stock still has meat on the bone to come down or it doesn't because maybe it's not up enough or man, this has really room to run and squeeze and just kill shorts for days, things like that. So I always recommend number one, long. So if you combine my answers on that, I would recommend if you're brand new, go with all the long strategies first. If one does not feel right, start to just master them as much as you can within like a couple weeks. That's all I mean. You know, obviously we're trying to get through and identify what makes sense for you. But then if none of the longs feel right, but you have at least a general or at least a preliminary understanding of how you can long, then try to start shorting one at a time. You know, maybe the first resistance, maybe the death line short, uh, maybe the first red day. But I, I really, really do want traders to learn the long side first, man. I just really do. It's how I started. It's how Alex started. It's how Bao started. It's how many started. And it's just really effective when you do that. I, 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 I truly believe that. But again, man, everybody's different, right? Everybody's there. Like I know traders who bum rush short immediately and just became, you know, $4,000 a day traders within literally four months. Um, cough, cough, fay. <laughs> so I don't know, dude, you know, again, it's, it's, I'm going to answer the question that I think the majority should hear, not just a single individual, but I definitely recommend that. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, man. I, you know, it's funny guys, seven years ago, man, eight years ago when I started, it was all about the first bounce. I didn't even know what it was called back then. There was no name for it. You, you got to understand MIC was, it wasn't even a freaking a seed of an idea. You know, I, I was barely trying to figure out trading on a Scott trade platform, then E-Trade, then TD Ameritrade, and then, you know, Cobra down the road and, and like really good brokers. But I started doing the first bounce on mobile. Um, yeah. Darn that master you. I started get, when I became consistent and really started to seeing success. And this sounds fucking crazy. Believe me. I know when I tell myself this, it sounds absolutely absurd, but I was mobile trading massive quick tanks off highs on dips, AKA now called the first bounce on my TD Ameritrade app, bro. I swear to God. And the thing that was so funny about that is for those who are familiar is TD Ameritrade used to be $10 to, to buy and then $10 to sell. So it used to cost you, two, that, dude, that was my generation. This, this shit was not free, but they had much better fills. So I could phone trade, bro. I would get a ma major like pullback or stuff like this and I would fill down here. And sometimes with a market order, believe that or not. And I built accounts doing what I didn't even know what it was called at. The, I was first bouncing on very strong stocks. I saw a pattern myself. Everything I learned, I trialed and aired. And then, you know, obviously when Bao or Alex or I started networking with really good traders down the road, they just made me so much better. But my original foundation is watching people on Twitter and like Modern Rocks account back when nobody really knew who Bao was, just kind of like a, a public Twitter presence. And I would see a couple commonalities, but I would trial and error my couple things. And I realized, you know, from my own trial and error that holy shit, the first bounce and longing is how you build an account when you're brand new. And you, when you just, not only do you need the right broker to short, the fees are so much more, it's much more dangerous. Cause dude, you can literally first bounce with a cash account. You don't even need a margin account technically. Um, that's what I was doing. And I just kind of figured that out from day one. So 
I can, again, I could rant on this all day because that was my experience. I built accounts doing the fucking first bounce, dude. And I didn't even know that that, that was a thing. I just did it. So yes, I don't recommend short selling immediately from day one per se. I mean, you can, but it's just more dangerous and has a shit ton of fees. So you guys got to know what you're getting into, but you do need, and I cannot stress this enough, you do need a very professional platform like Cobra or like TZ from the get-go because again, guys, TD Ameritrade, while they used to have good fields, they weren't the type you should be day trading on. I, that was just the best at the time that I knew of from my perspective um, and resources eight years ago. And the thing is, they used to have much better fills because now everybody's fighting for free commissions. So their fills are going to be way shittier. TD Ameritrade seven years ago had 10 times better fills than they do, I'm sure. I mean, I don't know. I haven't placed a day trade on TD Ameritrade forever, but I'm assuming. That is what I'm trying to master right now. Gene, yes, that's it, buddy. Uh, dude, Gene, it looks like you've mastered the ladies, bro. I love it. <laughs> you got to master the first bounce. Yes, bro, yes. Start humble, start small, and it's one thing at a time. Master the first bounce, bro, and if you get really good at it and you have an understanding of it and it still doesn't feel right, then you gave it not only a college boy try, you said, look, I tried something, I got decent at it, but it still doesn't feel right and fit my persona. So now let me try maybe a shorting technique or a shorting setup that maybe, again, guys, it's all trial and error to what works for you. There's 10,000 ways to skin a cat. There's 10,000 ways to make money in the markets and you're going to find yours, but it might be something you least expected in the end. I don't know, but you're never going to know until you try. You're just never going to know until you try, man. Oh, I'm winded from all this ranting, man. I'll tell you. Can you imagine being in a relationship with me, man? All I do is fucking talk. <laughs> I'd drive you crazy. <laughs> I'd drive myself crazy. Uh, dude, all right. Who's got questions? Who's got questions? Hit me. Got like 15 more minutes. What you guys got? Any? Hey, I'm here for you, man. We can wrap it up if you want. <laughs> Any questions on process, guys? Any questions on my process earlier? Any questions? Here, let me check YouTube. Again, any questions coming inside the club, just give me a text. Uh, here, right here. One sec. Anybody on YouTube, I'll, put, I'll literally spell it out for you. Anybody on YouTube with questions about joining? 213-458-5997. Uh, Hit me up. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what, Woody? We can do that again, man. Um, Fonz, thanks, brother. Uh, later, bro. What we can do, what, yes, I will go over that again. So check this out. So I have my full process. Where are we? New member. If you guys go to the new member webinar channel or the new member channel, sorry, and then we click Tosh full process, this is what I do. This has been my process for many years, about four years now, I'd say, maybe four and a half. Um, you know, this is just, I, I, like, I don't usually like to give this much information on a public webinar. You guys got to join, but I'm just going to help you out here, man, because I think this is good stuff to learn. So you guys can at least see what we're talking about. And I'm one of many, you know, you might like my teaching style or my process, or you might like 10 other people that we have that can teach you at MIC. So check this out. Um, yeah, Kolda, be careful with, uh, mobile trading. I know you're saying that you're doing that right now, brother. It's, you know, if you want to really commit to, I'm not even saying a community like MIT, I'm just commit to trading in general. You're going to want to set yourself up, man. Get a nice desktop. You know, even a preliminary $1,100 HP is a better start than mobile. And just anything you can do, man, a fucking laptop if you can. But get a PC and give yourself some screen real estate and don't wing it. Because I, <laughs> again, man, I'm the, you can tell the, by the way I talk, bro. I'm, I'm, I, I shoot from the hip, man. I, I winged a lot of shit back then and I still wing my life a lot. But um, the more you can pre-plan, the more ways you can set yourself up for success, you're going to want to do, man. And, and mobile is just, <laughs> it's pretty dangerous, bro. <laughs> I've done it. Trust me. I've done it all. So, what I was talking about earlier in this webinar before I was recording, but now that we're officially recording, I want to go over my process of what I've looked for every single day for years. And it's very simple. And I'm going to lay it out for you guys. It's, it's very, very, very simple. Here's a tip for all you shorts out there having trouble in the open. Shorts, you only have three major options in my opinion, and you can get comfortable with these. If you only waited for these three, your consistency will fly through the roof. Here's number one. 
and it's called waiting for outer lines. And your stop is either new high of day or a pre-market high of day. Usually it's the pre-market high of day. So let me give you a couple chart examples to talk about that. Number one would be camp that I put in this PDF. Again, this was created years ago, so I'm trying to remember exactly what I was thinking, but I, I pretty much can. When a stock is just kind of in this no man's land, it's bouncing a rough, uh, you know, it's bouncing off VWAP. I call this the ping pong method that me and Joe kind of coined uh, the term, you know, it's, it's through, it's back through, it's back through, it's back through, it's back through, whatever, both sides. What you're going to notice is that these usually launch or just die out in the open, but they usually launch. So, you know, just shorting right when the market opens is a terrible fucking idea. So you want outer lines and how do you incorporate outer lines in your play style? You're going to notice them with the previous tops. There's a top right here, obviously, which is why I started scaling right there. That's a bit of a top right there. And then this is the last top it had. So I was willing to scale from 225 to say about 250, 255 with a stop at 260 because that would be a break of pre-market high of day. This is what's called outer lines. Another example of outer lines would be this one. And this is an exaggerated, exaggerated example. Like some people scale from you know 270, but this is an exaggerated, hey, it's opening on VWAP, it's been playing ping pong, it's got real no clear major direction. Yo, maybe we hit outer lines on this bad boy. Boom, another example. And again, nail and bail. So, you know, again, a long time ago, stocks used to fade a lot more than they do. So I would hold all day, man. As you can see, I probably, I'm almost 100% that some of these were a core position, which I used to play. So as you can see, I was probably just piecemealing out of this and holding a core position from the morning, basically. So that was kind of that. So, um, but when we get back to it, it's just outer lines, man, nail and bail, do a couple of those a day. Now here's a really, really cool tip for you. This is my favorite tip I can give you possible. Why did I short at VWAP and why is this VWAP not, why are my outer lines not over here? VWAP is the outer line and I'm gonna show you why. Because it didn't play ping pong at VWAP come the open, did it? This is how you know, guys, VWAP is sentiment. So check this out. I'm telling you right now, you gotta fucking pay, this is a million dollar lesson for you, a million dollar lesson for free. For anybody who's listening to it. When it plays ping pong at VWAP, there's no clear direction. It's like a bipolar chick, loves you, hates you, loves you, hates you, loves you, hates you, smacks the shit out of you. You gotta wait for this, you gotta wait for that smack and dodge it, dude. You gotta dodge the table thrown at your head. That's what Outer Lines does. Let's go back. <laughs> uh, I know, man, I got, to, I got some crazy examples, guys. This, is, there he goes, talking about Puerto Rico again. Here is an example of a very neutral chick who's calm. She's like, look, dude, I'm not going to slap the shit out of you, but don't piss me off and I'll be waiting right here. It's not like, this is PTSD, right? This is like, oh, I don't know what's going to come, so I need to wait for a perfect entry. This is, this is the outer line. It's clear. It's broken. Look at pre-market. Look at pre-market. It's, bro it's not coming back. It's not back through. It's not back through. It's not back through. It's not bipolar. It's clear. It's a broken stock. 360, ideally up to arguably 380 because you got kind of a top right here and a top right here. That's the outer lines. That's what you scale. And then you risk whatever, obviously you're willing to risk. I know some crazy fuckers that are willing to do 360 or 430. I think they're idiots. But my point is, is you have to incorporate what, number one of the process. What's the outer line based on a rela relation to VWAP? The outer line playing ping pong, the outer line is literally the outer tops. It's the outer lines. I would have scaled to, what was this? Uh, 26, 250. That's the outer line. What's the outer line? Number one of the process. What's the outer line? Establish where are the outer lines. Outer line here is, since it's not bipolar, since it's not playing ping pong, the outer line is 360. That is as simple to under, I could teach a 10 year old that. If you guys are still having trouble understanding, that's okay. But I'm telling you right now, it's this, the beauty is in the simplicity. I've never walked you through my process like this. So I'm trying to really, really do this properly. Um, number two, number two, that was all number one. Where are the outer lines? And then do the outer line. Now, number two is wait for the major top, AKA stuff move, AKA death candle. They're all the same thing because those are what tops are formed from. So let's go to a couple chart examples. 
Um, oh, again, 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 here was the number one. Here was the outer lines. I was just actually early and then it fucking the floor fell out. But, but I would have loved to probably scale five, like the outer, see how broken it was. Wasn't playing ping pong. There's your guide. Okay. But let's talk about number two on the process. Number two, did it put in a top? Yes, it did. Look at this opening death candle. Beautiful, beautiful. This is Long's jumping off Niagara Falls in pressure, in stress, being like, oh my God, what did I just do? What did I just buy? What did I just Long? You can feel the hurt, the pain. And I'm not, you know, super biased against Long's. I'm just, while I'm a short edge, I'm just waiting for an edge. Obviously, like Harry Haas would wait for the teleport candle that would put my toes, you know, on edge, you know, as a short. So again, it's not like I'm trying to beat up on longs. It's just, if I'm a short seller, I need to wait for the moment where the chart beats up on them to give me an edge. Does that make sense? So boom, stuff moves, death candles, or just a major top in general, hit the pop. That's number two on my process. Boom. This was not an outer line. This was just wait for a top or wait for an indicator of a top. No, again, again, death candle, wait for a pop. Man, boy, dude, when I see something like this, this is one of my all-time favorite setups. If not truly, I think maybe my favorite setup of all time. The first candle out the gate, that's a massive death candle. And the only way you can establish a death candle, guys, a true death candle, I don't care what anybody says, there's only one massive true form of death. It's on a three minute chart and it's a candle that's three times the size of any candle you've ever seen. And I'm not talking about a news candle. That doesn't, that doesn't equate, we're talking price action. This is the biggest candle by four times of any candle on here outside of like, obviously the first gap up or new. We're talking about normal price action. What do you think is going to happen when this pops? Oh my God. Oh my God. I love it. I love it because longs are really in trouble. So again, just wait for the top. Here's another example. Here's a stuff move. Wait for the top. Wait for the stuff. If I don't know where it's going to go. So like if I'm right here in the open and the, and the morning's coming, I don't know what this is going to do until it majorly tops. So I'm not using outer lines. Why would I? The trend's intact. Why would I use outer lines on this? Wait for the top. Okay. Ma Oops, sorry. Hold on. I'm trying to, there. Wait for the massive stuff. Boom. Stuff. Hit a pop. Scale up to with a stop right there. That's what I do. That's number two. And again, you don't have to do any of this. This is just my process. When you come into MIC after years, you're going to see what your process is and you're going to navigate towards something. Again, still number two. Didn't know how far this pump would go. So why don't I just wait for a top, hit a pop at resistance with a stop there? It's simple. It's very simple. Does that make sense? Outer lines again on a low hanger. This is called a day two. Day one of the run, day two right here. Where are the outer lines? Where are the major peaks of resistance? There. And I like to do, I like to meet in the middle of these, right? So you could obviously wait for like 2350 or 24. That's the most exaggerated example. But the, the examples I love are always, if it's made a very long journey, and this goes for anything, you know, not just a day two, this goes for anything. Um, no, no, Gene, I didn't. Because um, just because I, because I'm very patient for outer lines. Um, but when you lose, yeah, you got to cut. But no, no, not, not that often. Not if I wait, not if I wait. Um, so right here, guys, the reason why I like the 2250 is obviously a whole and half dollar number. Sure. Um, but this was a massive journey to the first part of the outer lines. When that happens, it's just a resistance from, it's like, think about a runner running around a track and he's running, he's running or, or uh, here, I'll, I'll show it to you. So like he's running, he's running, he's jogging, jogging, he's jogging, he's jogging. Now he's running. Oh shit, dude. This is it is a long journey, man. Now he's fucking sprinting, bro. Now he's hauling ass. He's tired by the time this hits a resistance because this is a reason. Resistance is a reason for something to tire out, let alone he's tired from a long journey. So incorporate that in your trading as well. There's a lot of things to think about. I promise it's not as hard as it seems, man. When you get this, you really get this. Again, outer lines. Day two, just outer lines. Where are the tops? Top, top, top. Uh, and then number three. Oh, wait. Um, well, or no, that, what, what was I saying? The number three one, I didn't go through number three, did I? Uh, number three is, hold on one sec. I'll show you an example. If number one, which is an outer line doesn't work or it doesn't even show up, not work. It just doesn't show up. So like the BWAP with the ping pong, then you have number two with like the death candles or a top to hit a bounce. Wait for number three. And number three really is just an exaggerated as hell version 
of number two, but it's very exaggerated. So like if number one, and it's really number two, but if one and two don't show up and they're like textbook, it's to a T and you're super confident, wait for something that's got all the massive attention it's squeezing it's usually one that breaks pre-market highs and goes and goes and everybody on twitter is like oh my god this is going to be the next tesla stock uh just wait for it to top and hit bounces man and because because what happens is is it's it's impatient shorts so like i think the best example i had in here was um hold on it was this one. It was this one. See how this was. It's really just number two, obviously wait for a top, but this is like where FOMO pre like pre-market shorts or any type of amateur short really got, you know, maybe he chased, you know, this isn't really a chase example, but just something goes super parabolic. Just wait until the eyes are off it, man. The eyes are off it when a top comes. I mean, it's as simple as that. So number three, <laughs> if you break it down, it's just number one and two, bro. It's just number one. That's how simple process can be. It's that simple. Can you wait for one, two, or three? And three is just a super exaggerated number two. It's as simple as that. Just wait for tops and it, or wait for outer lines. And if you don't wait for outer lines, wait for tops, man. And if you can't wait for either, don't be a trader. You're not disciplined enough. I'm sorry to say it, man. If you can't, if you can't, if you can't wait for your edge, maybe trading's not for you. It's as simple as that. I don't mean to be a dick, but like, guys, it, it, to be successful in trading, you need to be disciplined. You got to be disciplined, man. You can hear the passion in my voice, man, because I'm trying to make you guys better. It's not about adrenaline. It's not about being the dog locked onto a freaking mailman and then chasing the mail truck. It's about waiting for the trade to come to you. And really good trading is actually really freaking boring. But guess what? Boring is profitable. And when you're profitable, you go, wow, I can actually do this for a living. I can quit that job I hate and I can support my family or I can do wh whatever you want, right? Like, I just mean that the results you're going to get from very boring trading is probably going to be undoubtedly your best results. So that's my rant. Any closing questions, guys? I literally have a couple minutes. Any last minute closing questions? That, that was my process. Just kind of wanted to walk you through that. What's worked for me for years, what I like, what I developed. Um, I want you guys to cr create a PDF like that for yourselves. Like, and make it simple, man. 80% of success is in the foundation of simplicity. I'm telling you, it's when you get in your head, it's when you overcomplicate that you're just like, you, you, you start to fumble. I got to nail this. I got to nail that. I got to nail this. I got to nail that. I got to nail it all. And it's like, dude, you'll just spin your wheels, man, because then you're putting too much workload, stress load. And you're like, you know, we've got the, we got the definition every day of like hot chicks and, and side chicks of like, hey, like maybe don't short the hot chick and short the side chicks and maybe long the hot chick if, it's, if there's an edge, obviously, and you're not chasing. Because chasing is as bad as fighting trend. It's just as bad. The results are equally devastating. Um, but what you need to do is do what works and keep it simple. And what we do at MIC, guys, and this is why you need to join if you're not you know, a trader yet or stumbling in your trading, uh, you need to just eliminate your ego and say, I really need to learn a process. I really need to get on a disciplined way of life as a trader. I mean, hey, you can do it in diet. You can do it with your romantic partner. You can do it at your freaking job with your real boss. You could do it, you know, with your, with your accountant and taxes. You can do it in your trading, but you need proper education on how to do it. And that's why me and Woody were talking about the tab program, man, earlier. And, and you know, getting together with your tab partner and saying, listen, Alex, if I deviate from one or two, man, slap me, dude, because I'm not doing my process. You guys need to figure out what works for you and what and how you can keep it working for years to come. If you notice, if you go back, I, I close it now, but if you notice on that process, you give that PDF a read, no matter what market condition, I don't care if we have major runners through the ass, I don't care if we don't have major runners and everything fails out the gate, you'll notice it's not biased. You either wait for outer lines or wait for tops. That's any market. You just wait for the edge when you're presented. So any market, I can make money with that process if I follow the process. But you got to follow the process. It's not super biased towards Tosh. It's biased towards, hey, this is a shorting thing that, th this is a shorting strategy that works, but you got to wait for it. And you got to wait for the proper top or you got to wait for the proper outer line. So it's kind of like that. Yeah, talk to your tab about your, about your game plan, man. And again, and again, guys, I am telling you, man, I'll end with this. 
if something has a 92% win rate, I'm not saying copy with real money, copy when you're learning on a SIM and you don't know anything about trading for a month and see how we do what we do. But even when it comes to real money, read it every day and use it as a guide for God's sakes, man. I'm not saying copy with real money by any means. I'm not saying that, but I'm saying read the hell out of this thing through. If this is a 92% win rate and it's been back tested, like actually quantified in data, why wouldn't you inundate yourself on this every single day when you're forming your own game plan just to see if Alex's words back you up? Make sense? There's a lot to know. You got to learn this language. All right, guys, I'm going to wrap this up, man. This is super fun. Uh, I know we didn't have bow today. Hopefully I made up for it today with just a full, you know, kind of description of what, you know, what I look for, what it means to be a trader, hopefully some life lessons. I know I'm crude. Uh, we're not polished at MIC, man. If I cursed it, or if I gave too much info about Tinder dates and stuff, Hey man, <laughs> what can I do? <laughs> We're doing the best we can, man. Thanks guys. Really appreciate you coming, man. I, lo I love doing these. It's almost like my therapy weekly. It just kind of ranting and raving and hopefully helping you guys as much as I can. And again, man, if you have any questions or you want to schedule a call or just text me 213-458-5997. We'll see you next week. And uh, I'm glad that we finally flushed out that PDF because I know some people wanted to do that. So um, yeah. Yeah. Thanks guys. Thanks Tom, Eric, everybody. Woody, awesome stuff. Thanks, guys. I will catch you next week. And, uh, dude, see you in after hours, man. See you guys.